Well, hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the workbench and World of Modeling here, Dan, as always. And in this video, uh, upon request, I've gotten a lot of uh, guys asking me how to do some simple weathering. Um, really, with simple weathering projects, uh, they're pretty easy to blast out. Uh, however, with my approach to kind of the clean, more modern paint schemes, I still like to add a level of detail that you generally see, like scratches, pitting, um, of course graffiti, uh, attention to repatch areas, um, data changing, adding some extra decals if possible, uh, doing color highlights, uh, changing the color of certain things like tack boards, um, just a whole bunch of different things like that. I really kind of try to incorporate as much as I can in even in plain cars, you know, because there's still a lot of things that you can do to a relatively plain model. Uh, if you guys recall, I showed a bunch of those plastic pellet cars a while back, and that's a prime example of the kind of weathering that you can achieve. Uh, those kinds of cars generally have very light washes, but yet you can do a lot of detail work with scrapes, scratches, pitting, uh, graffiti, and things like that, and they only really take a matter of hours to do, and you can do quite a few relatively quickly. So that's kind of my philosophy with this approach to this video here uh, and the car we're going to actually be looking at is not a hopper but it's actually a box car like I said a lot of you had been asking if I could do a more modern box car weathering video where it focuses more on light weathering techniques not so much the heavy kind of rust bucket sort of cars that I normally do uh, so I've picked one here this is a, actually a relatively interesting prototype and this is an old Athern offering, uh, well I mean old as in a couple years back, uh, and it's actually a pretty rare model, it's SP698307, and with this one, this is the first car in the Prime for Grime series that they started, uh, one of the PCNF cars, these are really really hard to find, uh, but I managed to get one of these from a buddy of mine uh, to actually replace an old model, because I have two of these, there's the first one I actually made, right there, uh, my intention with this is to sell this one off, and replace this old one with this new one and I'm gonna be weathering it and kind of making it a little bit more up-to-date uh, with kind of how the current prototype looks and I will show a prototype photo however I will be deviating from it a little bit because the current prototype does have a little bit of graffiti now I really don't want to add a bunch of graffiti to this I want to try to keep it a simple weathering video here I will add some scribble and some stuff here and there when we get to it but for the most part I want to emphasize the work on weathering and with these kinds of cars, generally what you see is rust coming up from these door tracks, a lot of rust around the door panels, around these ribs and things like that, around the door track. That's generally what you want to concentrate on. As a prime example, I have another Prime for Grime box car. This one is a Wisconsin Central car. And just like the SP car in the background, I recently got a new one of these. I have an old car that I'm already uh, about to list on eBay. Uh, but here you can kind of see, at first glance, it doesn't look like it's crazy heavy. But you'll notice that the seams are light, are basically nicely blended together. you got rust streaking coming down from the door tracks, rust streaking coming down from the top track. Uh, the door stops around the door track area again and then on the doors themselves there's some rust you got rust pitting a little bit of scratching things like that now this looks very complicated but in reality this is a couple hours of oil rendering just some light blending and a couple simple washes to achieve this and of course light weathering on your trucks and things of that sort it makes it for a really good uh, detailed effect of course focusing on the ends on this one as well you get these really nice rust pits the roof is pretty cool that's the big thing that I changed compared to the last one, which was very light. I did a much more realistic, more up-to-date kind of roof weathering. So I've chosen this PCNF prototype again because these cars have pretty much the same kind of weathering. Um, so we'll be focusing on the roof, door tracks, the ends, uh, the doors themselves. We'll grime up the underbody a little bit. We'll weather, of course, the trucks, the couplers and everything of that sort. Now I haven't done anything to this model, this is straight out of the box, I have not dull coated it yet, uh, but I'll go ahead and show you guys the dull coating process because a lot of you guys uh, haven't seen some of my other videos where I actually show myself dull coating these cars, so I'm actually going to start there and show you guys how I go about flat coating this because we need to have a good sealant on this model before we can do any weathering to it, otherwise the weathering won't properly stick. So a good surface preparation is really important for a model like this. Uh, trying to apply acrylics, oils, powders, or anything like that to a model straight out of the box generally will result in a really bad finish. Not to mention the weathering will generally kind of uh, 
deteriorate over time as you handle the car, that kind of thing. Uh, so it's really important if you want the best results for weathering and the best base for weathering and the best sealant for weathering to protect it, use doll coat. In this particular case, I use the Testers brand doll coat, and I know a lot of you guys say that uh, it's discontinued, and it is. However, uh, there's still a lot of hobby shops that carry this product. Uh, I recommend you go online, look this uh, product up, and um, get yourself a couple cans. This stuff will generally last for quite a few projects. I usually get maybe like five or six, maybe seven cars out of this if I'm careful, and I don't waste it. The key with Testers doll coat, make sure that you shake it up really well. In this particular case, uh, I kind of pre-choked this can, but it already got really cold because we're in the dead of winter and it's cold as hell down in my basement. Uh, but generally what you want to do is shake your can up for about two minutes, just starting out. Make sure everything is very well mixed together and never directly go to the model to test, uh, to test spray. You want to practice on a box like that and just make sure that that's actually spraying properly. And what I generally want to do is get an angle about like this. And I'm going to go down the side of the model like this and get it completely coated. That's one side. On the ends, one, two, three, something like that. Hit this end here. One good long streak across the roof. One, two, three. Three good coats all the way around. And we have a great barrier now for our weathering. So. With the dull coat, especially in the cold, you just need to make sure that it dries up thoroughly before you handle it. Otherwise, you can uh, leave fingerprints, you can smudge it or smear the finish, and it'll mar the paint a little bit. So just make sure this dries up thoroughly before you handle again. Uh, generally, about 5 to 10 minutes is pretty good prep time for this. And then we're ready to actually start weathering this model. So if any of you guys have been following my channel or are even new to this, what I wanted to try to mention was that I generally will airbrush the underbody of these cars. And the reason I do that is because it's the easiest compared to trying to use a brush and get in there and trying to rub acrylic oil or washes into all these nooks and crannies. It takes a lot more time and it also beats up a really good brush really quick. Uh, the airbrush is just a quick way to kind of tackle something like this and get it completely and fully covered. Remember that the underbody on these cars, even on newer models uh, of rolling stock that are out there currently, uh, they generally get very dirty very quick under here. This is where all the spray and grime kick up from the wheel comes from uh, generally around the bolster section these sections here and then around the coupler pockets is going to be where you get a lot of that grime kick up build up mud dust dirt everything like that and again the airbrush is a great way to model that effect I like to use Anita's acrylic paints for all my weathering as you guys know I use earth brown and earth black. These are the most common colors I use for the acrylic. If you just get these two, these are the best colors to use for weathering. And you get uh, a ton of different color combinations with this. You can mix all kinds of different shades of browns and dark blacks and things like that for your grime coat. Uh, generally, I do kind of a more over brown. In this case, you can kind of see my mixture there. Uh, I always dilute the paint down with isopropyl alcohol, 70% to be exact, and I try to mix it up very evenly. I usually will take an old beat up paintbrush and I'll actually mix the paint inside my little dual action airbrush canister and then I'll uh, do a couple of test sprays to kind of see what it looks like. And if it's nice and thin and clean, uh, for example, if we look here, See how that paint is real thin and clean? That's what you're aiming for. You don't want to have any splatter or spots coming out of this. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to take the airbrush and start working down certain sections of the car at a time. Try to work down the main rib portion of the car. And I usually will do something like this. Kind of hit both sections at the same time. And I'm going to start building up that grime layer like this. And it's very easy to do, even on bigger cars like 89 foot auto parts box cars, uh, reefers, anything like that. It's very quick and simple to achieve that weathering. Uh, so I'm just going to take that and change up my angle a little bit. Just try to get all the angles that you can, and remember the heaviest, uh, con uh, really the concentration of the grime is going to be right here on that bolster. Again, referring to that area where the truck goes. That's going to be where the majority of that grime and rust will build up. So concentrate most of that work underneath there. And I'm going to switch to this side real quick. Done. That simple. So something like that, if you get the motion down real quick, you can knock these things out in a matter of minutes. You really can. 
And I reckon, uh, basically recommend if you're going to do this too, with all that paint that you mix, even if it's a small little bit, it's enough to do a couple models. So generally what I'll do is I'll take something like this, work on that, I'll pull another car like this, work on that. So I got this one and I got an NLK hopper uh, kind of over at the other end of the workbench. And I'll just kind of multitask so I can be as efficient with my airbrush as possible. So while this is setting up and drying, I can switch to another model and I can efficiently use all that craft paint. It's not that I'm you know, concerned about wasting a couple cents worth of paint, but it's just that you've spent all this effort hooking your airbrush up. You might as well utilize it to save yourself some time. Uh, it's just kind of a little helpful suggestion. Alright, so for the starting point of the weathering on the sides of this car, I want to keep it kind of simple and use water mixable oil. I have burnt umber here, and you could do this with an acrylic wash as well. You just mix your uh, little bit of earth brown and maybe some black, uh, just kind of dilute it down, and then you just basically uh, spread the paint all the way down the side of the car. Uh, but again, I'm just going to kind of keep it simple. I want more of a darker, kind of a grimier rust tone compared to what I would get if I was using the acrylic wash. So what I've done here is set this up on my workbench by uh, propping the car up with a pair of pliers here, small jeweler's pliers, and I have the car set at a comfortable angle so I can kind of come in here and work on it. Uh, I have a cap of just regular paint thinner here and I'm going to be using a large dry brush to do the wash effect down the side. It's going to be pretty thin. You could of course use a brush like this to kind of fine tune some stuff as well. I'll generally kind of go back and forth between the two. The technique I'm going to use for the sides here is quite simple. If you remember in those prototype photos, we were working with a pretty basic side. Uh, I don't really want to affect this patchwork way too much. Uh, I will be doing a little bit of subtle grime work uh, here and there, uh, but again, I don't want it to get out of hand. I still want the patchwork to maintain uh, kind of a fresher look, maybe about a year or two old. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my large brush and this is my basic oil wash technique. I just load my bristles up with a little bit of thinner. I will always have a paper towel uh, underneath the car. That way I can kind of catch some thinner, uh, clean my brush off regularly as I use it. And over here on my mixing paper, I have a little of the uh, Windsor & Newton oil. I just dab a little bit onto those bristles. And remember with the oils, they're going to go quite a long ways. So what you want to do is take the paint and then just start kind of randomly scrubbing it onto the surface. Now, I'm not worried about this patchwork, okay? I'm not trying to uh, get into that too much just yet. We'll have to treat that uh, specifically on its own when we get to it. That's the first wash there. The bigger portion will be this door track and then the interior of the door itself and I'm going to go in with a bit of a heavier wash and I'm working around that uh, blue patch there again streaking it up I just want the door to look relatively dirty don't worry too much if it looks like it's pooling out uh, once the thinner evaporates a little bit a lot of those puddles will dry up and you'll just be left with kind of the paint tucked in all those little areas so we're going to stop there and we're going to start concentrating back onto the area over here. Now if you'll notice, you can see that wash, how it's built up, it's kind of hard to see. But I just basically want to start pulling that up a little bit like this. And I want to refine those streaks a little bit. Notice it's getting tucked underneath that door track. It's catching all that grime and dirt in there, so that's really good. But you can see it's giving us a nice subtle tone difference in the side of the car. And we're going to basically repeat that step exactly the same for this side as well. And then, of course, on the opposite side of the model, it will be the exact same process. The ends we'll have to be a little bit more careful on, and the roof will do a little bit uh, uh, as well. And I'll show you guys the, kind of some examples of how I'm approaching this. Boxcar roofs are always fun to do because you can do so many different techniques with them. But the important thing to remember with any box car, regardless what type of car it is, how heavy it's weathered, how uh, what kind of paint, uh, anything like that, uh, the key thing to remember is that you always want to have a good base effect for whatever uh, rust pattern you initially choose to do. It of course, it depends on the prototype. Uh, in this case, I'm going to be doing some streaky, patchy rust uh, using a new technique I found recently. Uh, using a smaller stiff bristle brush like this. We'll demonstrate in a little while, uh, but I basically want to have a good prepped surface for these washes and for the later oil effects. And the key here is to just take the oil paint that you've gotten and start spreading it 
onto these panels. Basically you're aiming for the same diluted wash effect that we've done for the sides. So you're taking the oil paint and you're starting to scrub the paint into the roof panels. Now you'll notice that I'm going against the pattern of the roof. I'm just letting the paint kind of collect into these and I'm letting that thin wash let the paint flow. There we go. This is the corrective part. Now that you're doing, it's just going in. You're just going to fan it out. I don't want to overwork this. This is just going to be just a light blending here. You can see we're just going in. And we're just cleaning up those edges a little bit. The end panels, going to keep a little bit cleaner. Just like that. Pull some of that rust off. Really, you can work this however much you need to to get it right. Uh, but once you're happy with the results, stop and don't overwork it because you'll start taking more paint off. You just need to get it to a point where you're happy with it and then just stop. We can refine some of these roof details a little bit more later. Uh, but right now, what I'm going to kind of do is maybe get a little bit more thinner here. I'm just going to kind of clean up this one area because I kind of want to pull some more of that paint right against these raised surfaces here and just kind of let it gather a little bit better. It's kind of like that. I'll, uh, I'll cut the camera off here. Get close. You can kind of see what I'm doing. Uh, that definitely looks a lot better. I like that. There we go. Okay. So the effect that we've created is this nice light wash where you can see it's concentrated into those panels into those seams, those little perforated corners, uh, but this will give us a good base for the ladder rust effects that will be coming next. So the fun part now is going to be going in and filling in these little rivet streams, as you can see here. They're evenly spaced apart down the side of the car. And I'm going to be using a fine tip brush here. And I take a little bit of thinner on the tip of the brush, and I load it up with the oil and then transfer it to the model. I'll generally start in one corner and then work my way around. And you just basically want to apply a little bit of oil to these strips for uh, the first part. And it's just to get some paint in the area that we need to work a little bit and render. So what I like to do is just take some of that oil work. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just try to keep it as straight as you can. And again you'll notice that I'm not working this into the blue patch area below. I'm only worrying about the top older portion, the faded part of the paint on this car because that's the older paint where more of this grime is going to be more prevalent. There's going to be little concentrations of it in these sections here in the patchwork but they're going to be very subtle and again I'm modeling fresher patchwork so most of this is going to be pretty well hidden. The next thing that you're going to want to do is take your brush in this case, this flat bristle one here, nice soft bristles, I've loaded it up with a little bit of thinner, and we're just going to basically stretch out our oils here with the wash, and we're just going to kind of not only tighten these up, but also dilute the paint down, make it look a little bit more neat and clean. And we're just going to pull the paint upwards. It's definitely a different feel to the brush, but again, I don't want to get it into that blue paint, so I'm just working it up gently like this until I'm satisfied with it. Just work that paint in like that. Just try not to work it too much. It'll, it'll fan out as you go. Just kind of keep going back. Once you're relatively satisfied with it, you can kind of correct the other panels where the paint kind of ran off. Just pull some of that paint up like that. Clean it up a little bit clean your brush and that'll pull some of that paint off like that just get it cleaned up and hit that area up a little bit better there we go and we're just going to keep pulling it up and just like this before we get too deep into the weathering I want to just review the um, the specific patching and the way that the car's weathered 
according to the first photo here. This is obviously the photo Atherin would have used to do the patchwork replication for their model. And unfortunately, uh, with being the first Prime for Grime series car, they sort of paste and copied the artwork from one side and put it on the opposite side as well on the base model. Uh, so this isn't entirely accurate, but I am positioning this according to uh, how it is in the photo. So we're looking at the end here without the brake. The brake would be on this end of the car. And I have the model positioned the exact same way so we can particularly uh, start copying some of the weathering work. And what I'm looking at right now is these little patch squares. There's a little gray square here and a little brown square where they did some uh, patch and touch up. You'll notice that there's a little bit of graffiti at the top there that we're going to replicate. There's a little bit of, oopsie, too much. A little bit of graffiti right there that we got to replicate. And then there's also a little green tag inspection card there that we got to add. Uh, a little bit of rust around the door track. See, it's pretty typical weathering, just like what I said. Uh, the door usually grimes up the most, and then everything else just kind of on that area where a lot of stuff gets rubbed up against that track, it usually rusts pretty quick, but you can see what we're dealing with. Uh, pretty straightforward. And if we look at the opposite side of the car, which I have actually recently found, this is what the opposite side of the car looks like. As you can see, this is more recent. Uh, the patching is starting to get more deteriorated. Uh, it's slightly different on this side, and there's obviously a lot of graffiti now. That being said, it still gives us a little bit of a window into what this car originally looked like when it was first patched in 20, I believe 2015. And you can see that we're looking at some really good detail. Uh, there's a little bit more graffiti here that I want to replicate, maybe some older. This is, the black stuff here is a little bit newer. This white graffiti is a little bit older, so I might try to replicate some of this older graffiti work, not this stuff. We're not going to be painting that today. We're doing this patchwork. I want to keep the model simple, and I don't want to affect this patchwork too much. So we're just looking at what or this would have originally looked like. Uh, we got the rust on the track as well, and then you'll notice at the top, there's actually a little bit of sealant running over the car. And that's a very common thing. A lot of these boxcar roofs have a special sealant that they use to seal up the uh, specific parts of the roof. So we're going to be replicating all that. First things first, we're going to uh, basically model the patchwork. On the original model I did, I did this, and you can see I had tried to replicate that. So I'm basically going to be copying this to this new model. I'm going to be using a little bit of charcoal gray to replicate the patch square where the old trust decal would be. So what I'm going to do is take a fine tip brush and I'm going to dip my paint directly or rather the brush directly into the paint and I'm going to just rough outline this. And I've demonstrated this multiple times before. It's pretty straightforward. Even if you don't have a steady hand what I like to do is just kind of prop my hand up on my other hand kind of like this where I'm providing ample support and I'll just kind of trace outline that little bit of patchwork and I'll just try to kind of gradually work on the borders and slowly start filling it in a little bit until I'm satisfied. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. This was probably done with a spray can when they patched this over. Uh, so usually there's going to be rough lines, a lot of overspray, and over time the paint starts to kind of peel back off. So it doesn't have to be too uh, spot on here. Something like that, that's pretty good. So you get the uh, the basic idea of that little old patch square area. Now the same thing was going to be done with the doorstop here, where there's that rusty square. And what I'm going to use is actually a little bit of earth brown. And I'm going to take my cap off really quickly here. And I'm going to come in here, dip my brush in the paint. And I'm just going to kind of line it up with the uh, prototype photo again. It just basically kind of starts at the top and then works around. I'm going to dilute that down maybe a little bit because it is pretty heavy. I'm just going to kind of start to fan that out relatively slowly. And it kind of comes around like that. We're just going to start gradually filling that out. Just like the gray square, I'm making this kind of look blotchy. That way it's not exactly a brand new patch, it's something that's kind of been there for a while and it's pretty well aged up. 
What we're going to look at now is the rust on the door. I'm going to work on these tracks in a second, but what I want to start with is all the heavier rust inside this door. I'm going to start with thinned washes of my burnt umber oil, and I'm going to start working that into these little door track areas. Uh, remember it's going to be the most rusty at the top of the door as it works down. But I'm also trying to be careful not to hit that blue patchwork too much. I just kind of want to work around that at the moment. And I'm just going to now start kind of diluting it down a little bit more. And I'm going to start stretching it into the area between the door tracks. If I actually uh, better zoom in a little bit so you guys can see this better. What I'm doing is hitting these areas around the door. This will not only give them a little bit more depth, but this is also prototypical because this is generally where that uh, majority of the rust and grime buildup is going to take place because these are kind of shadowed and they almost serve as rain channels in a sense and this is going to be where a lot of that grime is going to be running into uh, and over time it obviously starts to oxidize, it starts to corrode and it starts to rust so well, that's really why I'm focusing mainly on that area first everything else kind of will come together now what I'm doing is pulling the washes down a little bit, kind of at the base of the door, and I'm going to continue to stretch that out a little bit. And now what I'm going to do is work on the interior of the door a little bit. I'm going to start by using these little thinned pin washes, and I'm going to kind of work them around the center of, or not the center, but the inside portion of these little ribs on the door just to kind of collect that grime like that let's put a little bit up there and not have a little fun here this is a little technique that I like to do a lot because you get all that pronounced grime exactly where you need it to be in a relatively short amount of time so what you do is you take the paint like that and if I can find the right brush I'm going to be using my flat bristle brush, and I think you guys know where this is going to be going. Get it real wet with thinner, make sure it's nice and soaked. And now, go in, start pulling that paint like this. Let it kind of pull up a little bit, don't be afraid to let it pool. This is what you want. Pull it down. Notice how that paint's getting caught in all those raised portions. Notice how it's puddling up a little bit. Don't worry about the paint puddling. That's perfectly normal. That's what we want. Don't try to wor over uh, work it. You're going to kill yourself trying to work out all those little puddles. You want to keep those. So this is just a basic result but you can just see how that rust and grime effect really builds up in those cracks and crevices and that makes a great base for the following effect and once this dries, I'm going to go back in and start hand painting some individual little rust streaks around the door handle area, around these little plates, things like that. Normally areas where the rust will kind of build up and then start to streak down as well. While we wait for the door to dry, what we're going to work on now is the outer portion of the track here. And I'm using the thin brush again, and I'm going to start by doing some rough lines. I'm going to streak them down partially, just like this, down and also around that doorstep, and I'm going to pull them down just a little bit like that. Not all the way down, I'm just going to kind of fan it out, and that doesn't look very good at first, but just remember this is a base technique. The idea here is we're going to render this a little bit by blending it, stretching it out a little bit, so it doesn't necessarily need to be perfect. That's just going to be kind of a rough example, but what I'm going to do is now take the brush. Let's pull that paint down. Notice how it very, very quickly starts to refine our streak lines, just like this. Starts to get them nice and sharp, and really with a minimum of work, too. Notice that you now have some decent looking little streaks. And you can blend this out a little bit, you know, if you're not 100% satisfied with it, you can erase it too. You can work it out. But, honestly, that looks really good. It's prototypical, it's what I see. And I think it looks realistic. And you can layer that as much as you want too. It sky's the limit. I mean, some of these cars, as you guys know, get very rusty. And you can just keep building that up 
for days. <laughs> I, and I've done that in a couple examples. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work on this little area around this doorstop here. I'm going to just dab a little bit of oil around there since that's kind of wet. And I'm also going to dab a little bit down here just in that bottom portion of the door track. Again, because it's raised with thinner, I really won't have to do too much blending work here. I'm just going to load that up with a little bit of paint. And I'm going to dry my brush off a little bit. And I'm going to just pull some of that paint down to make it look like there's just a little bit of grime that's just starting to collect in those areas again and it's starting to get pulled down over that clean patchwork. Give us a little bit more subtle variation in things, you know, a little bit more variety in the type of weathering. Let me see here. And of course, too, as an example, you could also go in and do some... Uh, side swipes, some rust dots, things like that to kind of blend it out if you wanted to, but in this case the prototype really doesn't have too much of that. It's not too uh, crazy. So what I'm going to do is let this dry up and I'm going to do this exact same technique for the opposite side of the car, so the one off camera in this corner. And while that works, I will let that dry. That'll be drying and then I'll be able to come back to the door and I'll start doing the fine streaking in there as well. We've gotten a lot done in a few hours, and as you can see, the rust is really nice. Everything looks very realistic and subtle, but it pops out at you. It has that uh, tone to it. It looks just like one of those real cars you would see out there in real life. And I like that look a lot. It's something I kind of strive for, because with cars like this, it's obviously so easy to over-weather them. The key here is subtlety. Take it one little bit at a time, and don't overdo it. As you can see, the patchwork is still in really good shape. Uh, it's got a little grime on it, but it's still glossy and relatively clean like the prototype. That's exactly what I want. Uh, on the ends, I've painted the coupler lift bar handle. They're white, just like the prototype. The ends are prepped, and I've also put the DOT safety striping on the sides. That is just Western Safety Reflective Tape. I cut strips out to size and then put them on my models. All my models have the real reflective tape. Uh, so. The next thing that I want to work on now is I'm going to start applying some powders to the underbody and get all this wrapped up. So I always use some Dark Earth Monroe Models powder like that here. I'll use some like Chalky White and some other powders like that. I'll usually hit the couplers, the coupler pocket there, the bracket, and then of course the kick-up lines to enhance those a little bit more. I'll go back and add some kick-up spray to the ends. Uh, I'll add some dust and grime to the trucks to enhance everything. I have painted the trucks on this model so far. You can see I've just hit them with a standard bit of road grime mixed with a little bit of earth brown and a little bit of black. I painted the wheels a nice, dirt, nice dark earth tone. Uh, so those are prepped and ready to go. I have not dull coated any of this in. Uh, and the reason I haven't is because I want to kind of preserve the glossy look of the patchwork. Uh, and I'm not going to be handling any of this rust for the most part. And where I would be would be right here where there's not really any rust to worry about. Uh, and it's just being cautious of how I handle my models. I worked around that. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and take care of the powder work. And then we'll start working on the roof because the roof is going to be the tying factor of this car. It's what's going to tie all of our work together and it's going to look real nice. Of course you guys are all familiar by now with my favorite technique for kick up and it's to do the actual spray blasts on the ends of these things. What I like to use is a couple different brushes. I might use like, um, for example, a larger brush like this. Sometimes I might use something like this. Um, in this case I'm going to actually be using a smaller brush. A Citadel, uh, what would this be? There we go. Base brush here. It's a pretty fine point, a little bit finer than what else I have. But the technique is basically the same. You use either acrylic paint or oil. And in this case, I'm using my burnt number oil. I'm going to load my bristles up with a little bit of thinner. We're going to blotch some of it off. All right. Clean my brush out. Maybe a little bit more. There we go. And I'm going to just pick up a little bit of paint on the brush. Like that. And then I'm going to do a test spray. I want to make sure that it's actually going to splatter properly. I might need a little bit more thinner. Pick up a little bit more paint. Try that now. There we go. And we just basically transfer this over to the model. If we get in real close, watch the spray pattern. Notice how quickly it starts to travel up. Don't overdo it. It's very tempting. It's very easy to do. Only do a little bit at a time. Put it where you want it. Don't overdo it. Simple like that. Alright. So that's pretty easy to do. 
do that kind of thing on both ends and it'll usually do a really good job of enhancing that. I'll clean up my brake wheel a little bit because there's a little too much on there. Let's tidy that up a little bit. And there we go. As you can see, we now have a very convincing spray pattern on the ends of these cars and you can do this for your uh, covered hoppers, you can do this for your gondolas, your box cars. The sky's the limit, you can do so much with this technique. The roof of this particular car is going to be the most detailed out of all the work that we're going to do to it. I want to try a different technique with the roof, try to create some uh, blotchy rust uh, that's common on these PCNF roofs, the way it ch kind of channels down and gets pulled away. What I'm going to use is a flat bristle brush. This one is a fine touch shader, number six. I'm using full strength burnt umber oil paint and with this you just want to load up the tips of the bristles. Don't overload the bristles. Only put the paint on the tip of the brush. Then what you do, you come in, start at one corner, stretch the paint. Stretch the paint like that. Work it out. Just like that. Some. Change the subtlety a little bit. Maybe add a little bit more rust, a little less to others. And just change up the technique. Add it here and there. Fan it out. Give you some interesting variation. You see how you get that really cool random effect? It works really well for these cars, especially the way that the roof is patterned. You can also do a similar technique like this for auto racks. That works extremely well. I'm going to do a couple more panels here just to kind of keep going with the demonstration. Just like this. Start in one corner. Work that paint just a little bit, but not too much. Fan it back out. Start one corner, fan it out. Gentle brush strokes, gentle motions. Doesn't take too much. Just stretch that paint out. Get some really great touch variations. And you can, of course, switch it to the opposite side and hit it from the other way, too, if you want. But I'm not going to try to get too crazy. I just want to get a good random blotchy rust effect for the roof. I'll go around and kind of vary it up a little bit here and there. Well, while the roof sets up, I want to go ahead and start enhancing some of our rust work. I don't really want to put too much else on this, but I do want to have a little bit more fresher, dusty rust coming down from the door tracks. Generally, that's going to be an area where a lot of rust will kind of concentrate, and over time, it'll start streaking down a little bit. So what I'm going to do is actually add just a little bit of powder to this door track, and I want to just replicate some of the dirt and grime collecting in this track, streaking down a little bit over time. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm just going to hit up certain little areas of this. I'm just going to put a little bit of powder to give it a little bit more, a little bit more fresh, dusty rust. Concentrating it just here and there. A bit of a heavy patch there. It's all right. You can move some of this down the the door here as well on the top railing. Shake that down a little bit. That's also cool. Just very lightly, again don't get too crazy with this, just kind of stretch it out. Well the powder work is all done on the track, uh, just let that basically set up, I didn't handle that in any way. This is not sealed in either, I don't recommend you sealing your powder or chalk work because it usually just makes it disappear and it's pointless. Uh, so I just leave that. It's not in a place either where I'm going to be handling it. I'm not going to be picking the car up by the track. You just got to be conscious with powders where you're going to be handling things so that you don't have a built up of powders basically around that area where you're going to be grabbing. For example, on this kind of car, I'm going to grab it in the center on the top rail here, gently. Uh, so I didn't put any powder work or anything like that there. Just kind of a rule of thumb I, I follow. The only other thing I did to this car was I added the safety striping. I painted the tack boards a separate color. Uh, I still got to do this side, uh, but other than that, I added the little green inspection tags above the COTS block there. That's a Smokebox graphics decal. And I applied that on both sides, like I said. Uh, overall, the model came out really good. The roof looks really nice. I added some little dot effects here and there just to finish it up. Uh, but overall, the model is complete now, and I'm very happy with it. The only other thing is I added some small tag work. That was uh, on the car in the original photo I had of this on this prototype side. Uh, so I just replicated that using a mechanical pencil. But that's all pretty easy. So the model is finished, and I'm very happy with it and it looks really good so it'll be one going in my uh, collection ready for service 
Now, the only other thing, uh, on the opposite side of the car, it would have this graffiti, as I've shown here in this current 2020 photo. And this is just kind of a decision I made not to model this. I don't like the graffiti work for one thing. The patchwork on this prototype side is also completely different to what's on the model. Uh, the model is inaccurate in that sense. So I don't really want to change any of this around and I don't want to add this artwork. I'm going to leave the model as is with the fresh patched look, despite it being inaccurate. But if you wanted to model this graffiti, all you would have to do is just trace it out with a mechanical pencil and you'd follow behind with acrylic paint and paint all this in, then do your small tag work with like a fine tip sharpie, micron pen, uh, whatever you have on hand, paint pens, anything like that, and that would pretty much complete the model. But uh, again, that's something I'm not going to do for this car. Uh, but overall, again, I'm happy with it, and I hope you guys liked this little weathering tutorial for this car. Uh, these techniques are very easy to demonstrate. They're very easy to do on any model like this to adapt. Uh, in the next video, we'll probably tackle a different, more heavily weathered boxcar and uh, we'll see what we can kind of come up with there. I also have um, a video coming up covering a scratch building project that I'm doing, so that'll be pretty interesting, so you guys can stay tuned for that. So anyway, subscribe here on YouTube for more content. Follow my work on Facebook and Instagram. My Facebook page is Dan's Custom Trains, and my Instagram is Danny Dankinson. Uh, you guys can follow me there on all my social media and keep up to date with the projects I got on hand, because I'm always posting pictures here and there of my work. Thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.